So the folks at Yanga FX, popularly known for their liquid, fire, and gaseous simulation tool, Embergen has released the third member of the Yanga suite of tools. Sometime within the year, they did tease a cool set of features which was coming to their real-time liquid simulation tool, and this was a joy to see as the demo of what this tool offer artists and how much time it will save them brought with it a sigh of relief as most artists can't wait to try it. And today we were seeing an announcement which deals with their real-time terrain tool, which they've been hinting for a couple of months is now available to the public as they've just announced the alpha release of GeoGen. GeoGen promises to give creators all of the tools they would need to create procedural, real-time landscape, terrains, and planets in minutes and dare I say in seconds. And today we're going to explore how you can get started with it and for anyone who's thinking about exploring this, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can download it totally for free. And with that said, let's get started. So, with GeoGen open right here, you would notice that the user interface looks very similar to what you have with Embergen. Right over here is where you get to find presets that you get to work with. So just in case you like to explore all of the cool presets that this comes with, you can. You can now open up a new project if you want to work on projects. And one thing which you would notice is because this is currently in alpha, you do have a trial period of 14 days. So within that 14 days, you can explore any of these projects or you can create as many projects as you want. If you do have a license, then you can go through and log in here. So to create a project, all you need to do is click on the new project button and this would load into a new scene. And with a brand new scene open, let's talk about navigating. For you to navigate within your viewport, you need to use the left mouse button, click and drag, and that way you can orbit. And if you click on the middle mouse button, you can pan. If you roll the middle mouse button in and out, you can zoom in. One thing which is quite interesting, initially it was frustrating, but then we did get a hang of it, is the right click. If you right click, click and drag, that changes the time of day. Pretty weird, not conventional, but at the end of the day, you will love it. If you move over to the right hand side, you'll notice that we have the node graph. This is where all of the nodes that you'll be working with exist as GeoGen is fully procedural, just like every other thing from Yanga FX. And if you want to make changes to each property, you can click and find those properties right here. There's also a very tiny node window that shows you all of your node network even when you're lost. Over here, you'd notice a couple of buttons and this initiates search. This shows you all of the nodes that you have within your node graph. This randomizes the seeds, moves all your nodes to the center. I guess this also does the same thing. If you have a new node selected and click, this brings that node a bit closer and you can use this to toggle and toggle off full screen for your nodes. The same thing also applies here. Right here, you notice that we have our transform tools and if you'd like to see a preview of your 2D output, you can see them right over here. So how do you start creating your own terrain? By the way, before you start creating terrain, I would suggest that you go ahead and explore with what you have. So by default, with the base terrain, you can do some stuff. You can play with the position. In this case, we are doing some cool stuff. You can also go over to the wrap noise and also play with the position of the wrap noise and explore that. But for you to start creating your own, what you need to do is to get rid of everything and start with a simple clean sheet. The first thing which you need to do is to right click, go over to the height source and add a base. This base is the foundation of mostly every terrain that you'll be making. The next thing you need is a renderer. Without the renderer, you can't see what is going on within the viewport. Most things you see within the renderer cannot be exported out to other DCC app. And for us to see what this base looks like, we need to connect the height map from the base to the height map of the renderer. And that way, we can now see what the base looks like. This base also comes with presets, so you can go ahead and take a look at all of the presets that this comes with, and you can simply go to town with them. So we're simply going all the way back, and from here, we can start exploring even more stuff. So with the base, if we go all the way down, we can choose to play with the amplitude, and you can see that. We can also choose to play with the offset. So depending on what we want, we can do that as well. For the scale, we can play with the scale to get some more ripple in, but I wouldn't suggest that you do this yet because we do have WAP. So if we click and drag, you do notice that we have a couple of domain WAPs that you can use. The one which I believe a lot of people would use, including me, is the WAP noise. So from here, you can go in and select any of the preset that this comes with. This doesn't only come with this preset. Actually, for the noise, if you go all the way down, you would also notice that we have different noise type. From Paralene to Veronai, all of those noise are currently available and you can simply use them as your WAP noise basis. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to keep this with the default Paralene noise. Going all the way up, we can choose the scaling that we want 
and go to town with it. So in this case, I can just simply scale this as much as I want. Let's change the lighting so that you guys can see what we have. So we can use the skill and do some very cool stuff. One thing which I think you guys might need to know is if there's any property you would like to solo and see or preview within your viewport, you can simply do that by selecting the node and clicking on that property. So in this case, if we'd like to see only the WAP from the WAP noise, we can do that. This shows up within the viewport in a solo mode. So from here, we can choose a rotation if this is what we want. And we can also choose to do some rotational pivot stuff. If we like to do some output amplitude stuff, we can do that. And the same thing applies everywhere. If we go to the base and we like to see the height map in a solo mode in the viewport, we can click and we can see that too play with the WAP amplitude as well and get some very interesting result out of it. At any point in time you like to exit, you can go right here, click on the X button and exit that. Every other thing that you might want to do here includes playing with other height maps, other masks and so on. So if we click and drag, you can see other respective nodes that can be attached to the height map. So we'll go over to the height modifier and we're going to throw in some terrace. So if we throw in that terrace, we need to connect the height map output to the rendering input for us to be able to see that. So once we have that, we can also go in here and we can start making some design changes. Probably we would like to have that terrace looking something like that. We can have that and we can simply do some blending depending on what we want. At the same time, if we would like to add even more stuff, we can simply do that. Go back to the height modifier as well and we can simply add, let's find something cool. Maybe critters, we can add that. We can also connect this right here and you notice that we have tons of those. So we can increase and we can also reduce. The same thing happens with the seeding. We can seed this however we want. And we can also choose to play with the range so I can increase that, make that massive. Let's actually move this over to a position like this and we can do some distribution changes. So depending on what you want, actually, you can do it. And something which I believe a lot of people would actually like working with the blend. So within the blend height map, you can mix two maps together. So I can just simply take this, plug that as the background. And these are the one I'm just going to go in and plug that as the foreground. I can connect that right there. And again, because this is super procedural, you do have all of these options to do some stuff. At the same time, you can also pick this, get the value that mixes these two together and mix that as the foreground with this one. And you can, of course, go over to the blend height map and change the blending mode too. So with this blending mode, we can either leave it as add or we can do some subtraction and get some very interesting result. So you do have that Boolean thing going on there and you can play with any of this offset that suits what you're trying to make. Same thing goes with the blending intensity. So we can change the blending intensity and you can see how we can mix and match and create these things in real time. Now let's talk about color. How you can work with colors here is very simple. So from the color section, we can click and drag. So you notice that we have different kinds of color tools here. I'm just simply going to go in and use the colorize. By default, the colorize is set to single and you can change this color to fit anything that you want. If you click on the drop down, you'd notice that you have different modes as well. The two color interpolation deals with two different colors which you can work with. And in this case, if we set this to green, we can only change it by simply going all the way up here within the color mask and change the direction of this. So this is one way you can change it. But if you like this to be driven by a mask, so I'm just going to pipe this base all the way back here and we can do the rest of those things later. So. In this case, I will go over to the gradient mask, click and drag, go right here to where we have our mask source, and I can use any of these mask source nodes and drive the gradient of our model. So we can choose to use cavity, and in this case, this is gonna look at the cavity and use it to drive the color. Now you don't necessarily see anything because we are not feeding a height map in there. So once we feed in a height map, there you go. You can start seeing that stuff. And of course, we can go into the cavity and we can choose to remap this by simply dragging this all the way up and dragging this all the way down. And you can see we just did that. We can also do the same thing here. Take that up, bring that all the way down, and we can invert this as many times as possible. Other things which you might also want to keep an eye on is within this color section, if you don't want to deal with changing the colors, you do have a few presets as well. So maybe you like to get some planet presets, you can have that there. Some vegetation presets, you can have that there. Some rock presets, you can have that there as well. So depending on what you want, all of these are now available at your fingertips and you can use them. So now that we have this one going, the next thing which we might want to do is to go over to the renderer and start beautifying what we have within our viewport. 
So for that, we can go to the lighting and this controls our viewport lighting. So we can control that viewport lighting, get that looking as good as we want it to. And we can go over to the water section, turn on the water, and we can also play with water level. If this is what we want, we can have some opacity going in there. If we like to play with the amplitude wave, we can. So depending on the kind of water you're trying to make, you have amplitude waves that you can play with. You also have some refraction indexes which you can do, and that looks really good. I can't wait to see a situation where we have this water simulating and all of that cool stuff happening. You can, of course, go over to the depth of field if you're into that. If you're into the fog, you can go in, throw in a little fog, and we can drop that density slightly down. So we do have something looking this good. And of course, we can also choose to play with the fog coverage depending on how much of the fog we want. And for atmosphere, we can also make the atmosphere active and do some very cool stuff with it. So all of these are currently available. Explore them, do some cool stuff with them, however you deem fit. And once you're ready to export, click and drag from the height map, go over to the export section and export the mesh. You can also export the height map if you want, but for this video, we're going to export the mesh. So once we have this, we need to go over to our export mesh details section and click on the folder button, define the name of the mesh that we want to export, and you need to add the extension. So in this case, we'd like this to be FBX. I'm just simply going to type FBX and click on save. If you don't type in the word FBX, this is going to save it as OBJ. So FBX, we have that, and this is going to export it for us. So right here in Blender, we've taken the liberty of importing the terrain, and this shapes with both the terrain and the water. So what you would notice is the water is sort of inverted. So the first things which you need to do is to reorient that by simply using the rotational tool and set this back to 180. And you'd also notice that this isn't as advertised. The water neither comes in as a volume file as this is just a simple plane and for the terrain we don't have textures so even if you switch over to the rendering and you choose to work with either ev or cycles there are no textures for this and you can also tell that when we exported this we did export with the color map but either ways this is still in early access and currently this is the first public alpha and hopefully before this gets to beta, would potentially see some update to this, which might include some volumes, some textures, and some other cool stuff as well. This is a very interesting one, and for anyone who's thinking about exploring this, I would suggest that you go ahead and start exploring all of the cool ones that exist within the presets. All of these are super amazing, you're definitely going to learn a lot with them, and you can simply go to town and see what you can do with it. So, this is it. Jojen is now available in public alpha testing, and 0.1.3 looks super cool, of course with a couple of quirks here and there, which hopefully will be fixed before the final release of GeoGen. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section, and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.